Right, let's now bring in IEBC Commissioner Dr. Rosalina Combe to just uh, shed some more light on some of those issues. Uh, thank you for joining us on the broadcast, madam. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ben. All right, so on May 26, the director of ICT, James Muhaji, was sent on compulsory relief for 30 days. Mm -hmm. uh, the latest today is that IEBC has sacked uh, procurement director Lawi Aura. Does this mean more heads are going to roll? And does, shouldn't it worry Kenyans because it is, it is happening this close to the election, two months to the election? Uh, thank you so much, uh, Ben, and I think it's very important for, for you to raise these questions with us. Um, you know, asking, they, they have been, we've been observing for the last four months that we have been working at the IBC, looking at the various processes, looking at the various procedures and, and, and actions that the, the Secretariat has been undertaking. There are areas that we have found strengths in, especially with the work of our returning officers and uh, both the field, the constituency level and the county level. We, we've been very pleased with the level of work that they're doing there. But obviously we've been disappointed with some of the actions that we have seen, especially in the procurement department. You have seen that uh, for many months now we have been subject of litigation and um, we've been very concerned at the delay in procurement of key things, especially right. the ballot, ballot. papers. Right. And uh, there is a very damning report uh, that has come out from the procurement board procurement review board that basically says that the process that was used to procure the ballot papers was fundamentally flawed, that it could be termed a sham, okay. that it could be termed an embarrassment, that it could not be perceived to have uh, met the threshold as stipulated in the Procurement Act, but also in the Constitution. All right. So when you are left with a, a situation in which you have processes that are undermining our constitution and our laws, then as a commission we have no choice but to ask those who are accountable to step aside. Before we talk about the sticking point in that ballot mm -hmm. issue, mm -hmm. what Kenyans will be asking, it is too close to the election, mm -hmm. will the SAC, the replacement of the SAC officers have enough time to familiarize themselves with the systems that I, B, C, and B ready for the elections? We are absolutely con confident that that will happen because, uh, you know, IBC is an institution, it's not individuals. We have uh, an institution that is well established. We have staff in procurement department who've been doing this work before. I mean, people get sick, that means there are people who take over and act when those people are not, are not feeling well. And we have every confidence that the rest of the remaining staff that we have within the procurement department are able to move forward. And actually, they're already moving forward in terms of prepar preparations for the uh, documents that are required for procure procurement of the ballot papers. Right. We have every confidence in that. And we've seen it, actually, with our IT department, ICT, right. that when we had uh, our director be asked when he was asked to go on, on compulsory leave, the acting director took up the responsibilities and you saw the nomination process uh, for candidates registration uh, take place uh, seamlessly using a new technology. Right. Mm -hmm. What are the sticking points in this issue of procurement of the ballots? I think I've, been, I've alluded to one part of it, which is the issue of, you know, if you read that report as a Kenyan, there is no way you can read that report and leave the person who's in charge of procuring still be in office because it goes to the point of, of uh, touching on the professionalism and whether there was any seriousness taken and whether the people who are doing that, looking at the documents itself, the tender document, understood the enormity of the task. This is a huge responsibility. Ballot boxes, ballot papers are important for any electoral process. So when as an officer you have been given that responsibility on behalf of the Kenyan voters, on behalf of the Kenyan people, you have to take that responsibility seriously. And if you do not take that responsibility seriously, if you do not realize that it is important for you to do your part of the job, a small part of it, but it's a very important job, then we have no choice as a commission than to ask you to step aside and to leave other people who understand the importance of this task to do that uh, on behalf of the Kenyan voters. Why does the commission want to be involved in the tendering process? Isn't it meddling in what should be purely the work of the secretariat? You know, Ben, the, if you look at the IBC Act, it's very clear. It gives the commissioners three key responsibilities. Strategy, uh, oversight, and also policy. Oversight is exactly what we're doing. It is our responsibility to have an oversight over everything that happens in the commission. 
we are not asking to go and sit down in the evaluation boards and, uh, and, and sit at Lillian Towers and look at the, the tender documents. Absolutely not. What we are doing is exercising our oversight responsibility for which we saw, we saw, we took the oath of office and said that we'll fulfill those functions. Right. And we are not about to leave aside and, uh, and be intimidated by whoever not to do those functions. That is a responsibility the Kenyan people have tasked to the eight of us and that uh, to the seven of us, and that is a task that we will take seriously. Before I ask you about the KPMG audit report, uh, following this Aura story, it seems that mm -hmm. what we know as the official communication team of the IBC was not aware of the communication by the chair of Fuller Chebukat until later on, uh, you know, pointing to uh, some kind of uh, dis disparity or, or, or disjointed operations. Are there differences between the commission and the secretariat? I mean, Ben, there will always, in any institution and in big bureaucracies where I've worked uh, before, there will always be challenges. Uh, even in your own family, there will always be good days, there will be bad days. Those are challenges that the Commission has, just like any institution. But I do not believe that it is anything that will undermine our ability to be able to deliver free and fair elections. There are those challenges that we'll have to keep dealing with. There are, and, and we have said to our staff all over right. that we're here to ensure that anybody who comes, who stands in the way of us delivering free, fair, credible, and peaceful elections to the Kenyan people, we'll deal with them. All right. Our sources tell us that that much-awaited report, audit mm -hmm. by the KPMG of the Water Register, is out. Anything you can tell us? Yes, we've had uh, briefings with the IA, with the with K, KPMG on the on the audit report. Uh, we we know just vaguely that some of the recommendations are far-reaching far in terms of the legal reforms that need to be done, both within the ICC and uh, IEBC and other institutions. Yeah. And uh, but the details of the numbers and, uh, and and such details, we're yet to get the concrete report itself. And once we have that, we will obviously send that report to the National Assembly. We will also send that report to the Senate, and we'll be ready to come back and uh, delve into the details. Of that, of that report. So you, you, you don't know yet how many dead voters are been expunged <laughs> from the uh, No, but just to remind you that uh, the, uh, the KPMG cannot expunge any names uh, from the register. They can make recommendations, recommendations. to us, and right. once we receive those uh, recommendations, we will review them, and then we will be able to make those changes in the register. But for now, we believe that uh, from the preliminary discussions we've had with them, a lot of the work that they have done is commendable, and it's doable within the period that we have, but there are other recommendations that are more far-reaching that require institutional reforms, that require uh, legislative changes to be able to do them. All right, tomorrow mm -hmm. is day two of the appeal uh, by IABC uh, mm -hmm. in front of the Court of Appeal. Mm -hmm. What are you expecting from this case? You know, Chairman Shibukati has said very clearly that uh, for us, whatever decision comes out, the IBC will abide by it. So we'll leave the courts to do their work and whatever decision comes out of it will we'll, we'll, we'll follow the law and, and apply that law. Do you believe that uh, by the presidential results being declared at the constituency level will we'll, we'll take away the, the right of the chairman as the presidential returning officer to do his work? I think what we've been trying to say all along is that uh, there is a lot of... Uh, ignorance or lack of information about our mystery around the whole results management framework and how results are tallied from the constituency level to the national level. Right. And that is why at the national conference that we'll be having uh, from next week, we will be going through with the Kenyans what we have uh, outlined as a results management framework so that people know we can demystify this whole thing of, uh, of results and, and the anxiety that it places. Because for me, I look at the reactions that I'm seeing and some of the questions that are being raised around the appeal as more of people, you know, doubting the transparency of the process. And we, we want to make sure that we have a transparent process. We'll be having uh, a very transparent uh, place at uh, Bombers of Kenya where we'll be announcing the results. It's an open floor where the media is invited to be able to oversee, the cameras will be there. And what we want to assure Kenyans is that there, is no ga there are no games we're playing. We want right. to ensure that we have a transparent process uh, that satisfies the, the Kenyan people. My last question to you, Madam. Mm -hmm. um, the, the KIEM, the Kenya yes. Integrated Man Election Management System, mm -hmm. the tender was cancelled. Mm -hmm. uh, what's, what's the latest? Kenyans would want to know that. And are we going to face the challenge we faced in 2013 when, you know, the election... Um, election uh, system arrived so late that, you know, the IIBC officials mm -hmm. were not able to familiarize them, themselves. And there were problems, especially with the 
evils, mm -hmm. are we going to face the same problem? Unlike 2013, mm -hmm. this year we, ha we already have 35,000 kids in the country. We are expecting 10,000 kids anytime now. And uh, that, uh, so that we have a total of the 45 uh, kits that are required. It's actually been really useful for us that 11,000 of those kits are the ones that were used, the KIMS are the ones that were used for purposes of verification of uh, the register, the voters register, which means that Kenyans and our staff have had a chance to actually use the technology, the same technology that is going to be used during elections. Right. So I think in terms of uh, the training, in terms of the availability of the technology, yes, that is being delivered on time, unlike 2013. But there are obviously concerns that we have as the IBC in terms of transmission of results because we know that um, the law requires that we transmit the results electronically. Yes. But the country, the coverage of, uh, of, uh, of, a, of a 3G network in the entire country is very limited. So we are working with various providers to ensure that we, we deal with that uh, challenge. But it is a challenge that Kenyans have to be aware of, that there are limitations in the country in terms of coverage and that we all have to collectively find ways of dealing with them. And that if there are problems, when we are transmitting the results, this, it's not, it should not be perceived as uh, games that the IBC is playing, but it's actually a general problem that we have in right. terms of network coverage. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Commissioner. I thank you very much. Thank you for your time. Good thank having you. you here. That is uh, the chair, uh, Commissioner, the Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commissioner IBC, that is Dr. Uh, Rosalia Kombe, just shedding some more light on these issues. As a reminder,